Hello, welcome to the Marginal Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to talk about a massive exploit uh, on Tor and Firefox. So it's a critical security vulnerability. So let's get into it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So a critical security vulnerability affecting both Firefox and Tor browsers has recently been discovered and is being actively exploited in the wild. This serious flaw, tracked as CVE 2024-9680, has been assigned as CVSS score of a 9.8 out of 10, indicating its severity. Now the vulnerability details are as follows, right? The vulnerability is described as a use use after free flaw in the animation timelines component of Firefox. So a use after free vulnerability, also known as UAF for short, occurs when a program continues to use a pointer to memory after that memory has been freed or deallocated. So here's how it typically works that, that you know, you have a program that allocates memory dynamically using the malloc or, or you know, parentheses in C. The program stores a pointer in, you know, to this allocated memory. At some point, the program frees this memory using the free parentheses, uh, you know, that code. However, the program retains the original pointer and continues to use it, even though the memory it points to has been freed. This creates a dangling pointer, a pointer that references memory that is no longer allocated to the program. So if new data is written to that freed memory location, the program may access or manipulate uh, the new data unexpectedly when using the dangling pointer. So the key aspects of UAF vulnerabilities are, they often result from improper memory management, especially in languages like C slash C++ that require manual memory handling. The free memory may have been reallocated for other purposes, leading to data corruption or unexpected program behavior. Attackers can potentially exploit UAF bugs to execute arbitrary code or access sensitive information. UAF vulnerabilities can be difficult to detect because programs may continue to function normally in many cases. So to prevent UAF vulnerabilities, best practices include setting pointers to null after freeing memory, using memory safe programming languages when possible, when possible, when possible, employing tools that can detect potential UAF issues, then implementing proper checks before using pointers. Okay. That's very key using, you know, implementing proper checks before using pointers. So UAF bugs can have severe consequences, potentially allowing attackers to crash programs, leak data, or even achieve remote code execution in some cases. So some other key points about this exploit is it allows attackers to achieve code execution in the content process. The exploitation requires no user interaction and can be executed over the network. The flaw affects both Firefox and Tor browser, which is based on Firefox impact and exploitation. Okay. So the vulnerability is particularly concerning, very concerning because it is being actively exploited against both Firefox and Tor browsers users, right? This is new. This is a new exploit. This is, this, this, this is new out the box. So an attacker could potentially take control of the browser for Tor users while browser control is possible. You know, it likely won't lead to uh, you know, de anonymization, anonymization, right? For those using the Tails operating system. Now, in regards to mitigation and updates, to address this critical flaw, both Mozilla and the Tor project have released emergency patches. So, Firefox users should update to version 1. Point, uh, you know, 131. 0.3. Okay, so 131.0.3 or higher. Tor browser users should update to version 13.5.7. Uh, users are strongly advised to update their browsers immediately to the latest versions available to protect against this active threat. Now, additional precautions for those using the Tor browser, it's recommended to set the security level to safest to block JavaScript by default. Consider disabling JavaScript entirely, though, um, you know, though the about, you know, through the about config settings. So taking these steps and keeping browsers up to date, users can significantly reduce their risk, right? Of falling victim to this exploit. Now there are other vulnerabilities, you know, other known vulnerabilities, recent vulnerabilities in Tor and Firefox. Uh, again, we have this CVE 2024, 9680. We just talked about that. Uh, that has recently been discovered. Uh, there are other notable vulnerabilities patched in recent months. Now, 
What are those? There's the two zero day vulnerabilities exploited, you know, at pawn to own. Uh, that's Firefox, right? You have the CVE 2024-29944, which is a use after free vulnerability in the browser engine. You have the CVE 2024-29945, which is a logic issue leading uh, to the sandbox escape. These were quickly patched by Mozilla within 48 hours of discovery. Uh, there are multiple vulnerabilities addressed in Firefox as well. Uh, there are several memory safety bugs, some of which could potentially be exploited to run arbitrary code. Uh, there is the use after free issues in various components. You have uh, buffer overflow vulnerabilities. Now, Tor browser specific issues, uh, you know, while Tor browser inherits most vulnerabilities from Firefox, it has, you know, you know, the JavaScript related uh, vulnerabilities that could potentially compromise anonymity if exploited. There's occasional issues with Tor network integration that require patching. Now, mitigation strategies, right? To protect against these and future vulnerabilities, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing these key things right here. Keep browsers updated to the latest versions. Can't stress that enough. Keep browsers updated to the latest versions. For Tor browser users, set the security level to safest uh, to block JavaScript by default. Consider disabling JavaScript, again, entirely, again, by the config settings. Be cautious when visiting untrusted websites. Use additional security measures like firewalls and anti-malware software. It's important to note that both Mozilla and the Tor project are typically quick to uh, address discovered vulnerabilities, but that doesn't mean you just completely rely on them, right? You're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing your due diligence on your end. So users must remain vigilant and apply updates promptly to maintain security. There's also, you know, we're talking about Tor, we're talking about, you know, Firefox, but there's also a recent vulnerability in Chrome. So I don't want you Chrome people to think, oh, we have to hook. No, you're not, you're not off the hook. The most severe and externally reported bugs is the CVE 2024-9954, a high risk use after free defect in AI for which Google handed out 36,000 bug bounty reward. The browser update revolves a five medium severity use after free issues as well, impacted web authentication, UI, dev tools, done, and parcel tracking. The medium severity, you know, inappropriate implementation follows uh, in web auth uh, authentication, a uh, picture in picture and permissions, and an insufficient data validation issue in downloads were also resolved. In its advisory, the internet giant notes that most of the vulnerabilities were reported over the past couple of months, except for the inappropriate implementation in picture-in-picture -picture bug, which was reported in November 2023, and the insufficient data validation in downloads, which was reported in March 2024. The update also fixes low severity inappropriate implementation flaws in payments and navigations and uh, an insufficient data validation bug in dev tools. Google says it has paid out 70, 72,000 in bug bounty rewards to the reporting researchers. However, it has yet you know, to determine the amount to be handed out for the insufficient data validation issue in downloads. So the internet giant has made, you know, it basically makes no mention of any of these vulnerabilities being exploited in the wild. Users are advised to update their browsers as soon as possible. So some of the top browsers in 2025, as we are heading into 2025, obviously are gonna be uh, Google Chrome. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it has so much market share. Uh, you know, it's about, you know, holding over 60% of global browser market share. Um, the other one is probably going to be, uh, you know, probably Firefox, right? However, Apple Safari is also uh, reportedly going to dominate. Uh, it, I, you know, it has 20% of market share right now. Uh, one of the reasons why it's, it's probably going to, you know, ascend in 2025 is because it's optimized performance and battery efficient on Apple devices. It has strong privacy features like intelligent tracking prevention. There's seamless integration with the Apple ecosystem. So Safari's main limitation is its, exclu um, its exclusivity to Apple platforms. And Edge, Edge is gonna, you know, is gonna, is gonna, it's holding on to that 5.5%, right? Uh, but that's what I have for today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video so far, if you appreciate it, if you learned something, if you want more content like this, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. Also hit that comment section and the notification bell so you are aware when I release new videos. So I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.